now for another topic a theme and the topic that I really like about that is war and medicine a brief history of the military's contribution to wound care through the world war first for the wound healing society with George Bratton and David Burris let's begin with it as men finds better and efficient ways to kill and maim each other he also had to learn to care for the survivors this chapter is a brief history of the military's contribution to wound care for antiquity through the world war first it is only the dead who have seen the end of war for plato when men decided to use force and violence to satisfy his greed for power and wealth, he also decided that he must find a way to treat and heal his injuries, so that he could continue his campaign to possess what he desired or protect what he owned. Not, not biscuit gives us all mission bay means necessity teach us all things is a German proverb is a German proverb that succinctly summarizes surgery's birth and rebirth from war the importance of the modern US Army Medical Department's motto maintaining the fighting strength was appreciated for hundreds of years but maybe not always in the same spirit 16th century French military officers would hire surgeons to work for them on their campaigns. Having a celebrity surgeon could be very advantageous for the fighting moral of the troops. Ambrose Parry, 1510-1590, is said to be worth of the equivalent of 10,000 soldiers on the battlefield, as the men knew their chances of survival were greatest if he was present. The military is not responsible for all advancements in wound care, but it certainly has provided plenty of opportunity for many civilized innovations to be tested. L.F. Pilcher noted in his 1919 American Surgical Association Presidential Address the influence of war surgeon upon civil practice that during World War I, 35,000 physicians had joined the military and 14,000 were sent overseas. The surgical experience learned during this time caused significant change in civilian practices of surgical technique and antisepsis. This paper briefly touches the advancements of wound care by the military through World War I. Ancient now. To become too ancient, Homer's the Iliad in 800 before Christ is considered the first written description of the treatment of the of a battle wound. King Menelaus, form, a former husband of Helen of Troy, survives after having an arrow removed from his side by Macaon, the son of Asclepius, the Greek god of medicine and healing. Then when the Macaon saw the wound where the bitter arrow was driven, he sucked the blood and in skilled healing medicines on it that Sharon in friendship long ago had given his father Asclepius. Asclepius was the son of Apollo and Coronis. His mother was killed for being unfaithful to Apollo, to Apollo and was laid out on a funeral pile to be, con to be consumed. When the body of Coronis was to be burned, Apollo or perhaps Hermes saves the child from the flames and carried it to the camp to the centaur Sharon who instructed the boy in the art of healing. Galen in 130 to 200 AD was court physician to Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius and the gladi and the gladiatorial surgeon and it most notable for his anatomical dissect dissections in Galen's nerve he wrote that hemorrhage should be treated in one of four ways. Applying direct pressure with the finger, twisting the coot end with a hook, grasping the coot end, and tying it off or applying stippings. An example of his mixture was made from frankincense, a low egg white mix to a consistency of honey, and add a pinch of clippings from the fuel of a hair. Marcus Aurelius sent a mission of merchants from Rome to China and brought back silk that Galen used to tie off bleeding vessels. Galen wrote 
400 works describing the repairing of the skull and suturing penetrating intestinal and abdominal wall wounds. In the Middle Ages now, for over a thousand years, Galen's work was dogma. Galen had the technological view of purpose to every bodily function and illness. The early Christian church embraced it and made it the absolute authoritative world on medicine, to question it would be heresy. However, he is considered to have an overall negative effect on surgical progress because of his position that superation is an essential component of wound healing, Galen's writing and the ethics of two ecclesiastical councils, the Council of Clermont 1130 and Council of Tours 1163 put a stop to any advancement of medicine and surgery during the Middle Ages. The Council of Clermont prohibited priests and monks from practicing medicine, and the Council of Tours proclaimed Ecclesia abhorrent as sanguine, the church abhors bloodshed, and physicians are prohibited from practicing surgery. And so the Baba surgeon was born. The reader may be interested to know the Council of Clermont of 1095 was convened by Pope Urban II to assemble a Christian army to fight the First Crusade. The Battle of Crecy, 1346. The Battle of Crecy was fought during the Hundred Years' War and marked the first time cannons were deployed and strategically used in battle in Europe. The first hand cannon appeared during the 1260 Battle of Ain Jalut between the Egyptians and Mongols in the Middle East. Many historians consider the Battle of Crecy the beginning of the end of the chivalry. Metal projectiles and explosions created new wounds and new challenges. A German surgeon, von Flussbrunt, originated the belief that gunpowder was poison and must be removed. Euronymous Prongswig, also a German surgeon, wrote the first book on the treatment of firearm, firearm wounds in 1497. He wrote, In case a man, has been shot with a gun, and the bullet is still in place, he's, po he's poisoned by the powder, or part of the powder is still in the body, in the arm or leg or wherever the wound may be. Take a satan, push it through the wound, and pull it back and for the, to force the powder out. His work established the standard treatment for extremely messy wounds for almost 300 years, quartered the wound with a the hot iron or boiling oil and plug the wound amputation was not done unless gangrene was present and only through dead tissue to avoid the problem of blood le of blood loss. Brunswick is also created with reporting the first boa repair from a war wound. Now for the sixth and seventeenth centuries, Ambroise Paré one four. 10, 1590, become barber surgeon in the army of Francis I, 1536, 1538, and 1536 at the siege of Turin. Paris did not have any seething elder oil available to him, to him to treat the wounded. Paris substituted an egg yolk and turpentine and bandaged, and bandaged the wounds and observed that, that the healing was better under this treatment. He resolved never so cruelly to burn poor men wounded with gunshot. His observations, published in 1545, gave the impetus to a rational reform of the whole system of dealing with wounds, and did away with the theory of poisoned gunshot wounds. Perry was re reluctant to explore gunshot wound unless it was to remove foreign bodies, detached piece of bone, and congealed blood. Fractures were treated by rejection, immobilization, and various concussions to hinder development of pain, inflammation, fever, abscess, gangrene, and schwesel mortification or mortification. Vascular ligation was revived by Paris for amputations. A surgeon during this era had about 30 seconds to amputate the limb and three minutes to complete the operation, working without anesthesia and a tourniquet. This was not enough time for a surgeon, other than Paris, to complete the surgery and is why, such as Guillemo, Paris students again abandoned this method for direct cautery. It was not until later with the reintroduction of the tourniquet in 1674 by Etienne G. Moral, 1648-1710, also a French army surgeon during the siege of Besançon. That ligation would have more whispered use. Perhaps the most significant advance in the performance of amputation was the tourniquet of Jean-Louis Petit, 
une 1674-1750. Petit modifié de Morales to indicate so that it was easier to apply and tension could be adjusted using a screw. Petit modification allowed the surgeon to perform the surgery alone or with only one assistant, perhaps to hold the patient. Whereas before several people were needed, his device was also recognized to be useful to control bleeding from massive wounds. Henri François Le Drand, in 1685-1770, recommended Petit's tourniquet to the military and described the importance of pasiotomy and sizing into muscle compartments was essential to release pressure from bleeding, injury, or inflammation. William Close was a surgeon in the British Navy and considered the preeminent surgeon in. Elizabeth and England in 1536, he published a book advocating debridement, extraction of foreign bodies, and avoidance of cautery when treating wounds. He also renewed the debate gunpowder is poison by announcing that the bullet could be smeared with poison before it was fired. This was eagerly accepted and is thought to have been responsible for many prisoners of war being executed when their injured captors died with infected wounds. Now for 18th and 19th centuries, Napoleon's surgeon, Dominique Jean Léry, in 1766-1842, wrote extensively on the necessity for early amputation for any limb injured that cannot be saved. Hospital gangrene was frequently seen in untreated wounds and was almost universally fatal. Larry reasoned that an early amputation would obviate this danger by creating a relatively clean, viable wound. This belief was held by most but not all through the American Civil War, 30% of gunshots and fragment wounds to the extremities resulted in amputation. Larry developed ambulance valance fall flying hospitals, carriages that had a spring suspension so that a casual ride was, was possible. His surgical team would race through the battlefield treating the wounded and performing amputations on the battlefield. He resumed, he resumed that shock of the wound rendered it written, written, relatively insensate and the patient more cooperative. He tested his postulate in 1793 at the Battle of Mids and was so successful and was so successful in saving patients and proving true moral that he was tested with a record reorganizing the medical care of all the 14 armies of the French Republic. Carrera 18461890, a Russian military surgeon, recommended adding more extensive mechanical wound cleaning. Cleansing. Sorry, which he termed debridement, he demonstrated a significant reduction in mortality from patients he treated during the Russo Turkish War. In the Americas, wound care varied very little from the being done in Europe. The biggest advancement came in the way the wounded received their care. Jonathan Letterman in 1824-1872 was tasked by Major General George B. McKellen to fix an efficient medical care system of the Union army. Littleman devised the system of forward first first aid stations at the regimental level where one medical official was tasked with performing three aid. He established mobile field hospitals to be located at division and core headquarters. In August 1862, Letterman established an inefficient ambulance corps and supply system that he placed under the control of medical staff and steed of the quartermaster department. At each, at each hospital, one physician was responsible for keeping records on all admissions, and he and the second was delegated to provide shelter, bathing, fuel, and nutrition services. Ira Rutko, a surgical historian, said the title "Operating Surgeon" was one of the most momentous medical reforms to come out of the Civil War. Letterman instituted a policy that only the three most experienced physicians in each division are permitted to are permitted to perform surgical procedures. This was the first time. Professional privilege was in was in instituted and was dependent on documentation of the physician's proficiency and experience. Letterman provided the efficiency of his systems at the Battle of Fredericksburg, in which the Army of the Potomac suffered twelve 
thousand casualties his system was adopted by other union armies and was eventually officially established as the medical procedure for this entirely of the united states armies by an act of a congress in march 1864 gg keys home the chairman of surgery of the medical college of south carolina received the first medical appointment for active military service for the confederacy and he recommended that surgeons be examined by senior surgeons before they were allowed to perform amputations and we're done with today's topic in chapter one in other sessions we will receive and will overcome another chapters in this exciting moment.